Harun al-Rashid was the fifth Abbasid caliph. His birth date is debated, with various sources giving dates from 763 to 766. His surname translates to, the just, the upright, or, the rightly guided, fully translated. His name means, Harun the just. Al-Rashid ruled from 786 to 809, during the peak of the Islamic Golden Age. His time was marked by scientific, cultural, and religious prosperity. Islamic art and music also flourished significantly during his reign. He established the legendary library Beit al-Hikmah in Baghdad in present-day Iraq, and during his rule Baghdad began to flourish as a center of knowledge, culture and trade. During his rule, the family of Barmakids, which played a deciding role in establishing the Abbasid Caliphate, declined gradually. In 796, he moved his court and government to Arakar in present-day Syria. Since Harun was intellectually, politically, and militarily resourceful, his life and his court have been the subject of many tales, some factual, but most believed to be fictitious. One factual tale is the story of the clock that was among various presents that Harun sent to Charlemagne. The presents were carried by the returning Frankish mission that came to offer Harun friendship in 799. Charlemagne and his retinue deemed the clock to be a conjuration for the sounds it emanated and the tricks it displayed every time an hour ticked. Among what is known to be fictional is the Book of 1001 Nights which contains many stories that are fantasized by Harun's magnificent court and even Harun al-Rashid himself. Amongst some of the Twelver sect of Shia Muslims he is disliked for his supposed role in the murder of their seventh imam. Although Sunnis and Zadiyya Shia dispute the historicity of this biography, Harun was born in Ray, then part of Jaibal in the Abbasid Caliphate, in present-day Tehran province, Iran. He was the son of Al-Mahdi, the third Abbasid Caliph, and Al-Khazorin, a former slave girl from Yemen, who was a woman of strong personality and who greatly influenced affairs of state in the reigns of her husband, mother and sons. Harun was influenced by the will of his mother in the governance of the empire until her death in 789. His vizier Yahya the Barmakid, Jahya's sons, and other Barmakids generally controlled the administration. The Barmakids were a Persian family that dated back to the Barmaka hereditary Buddhist priest of Navavihara, who converted after the Islamic conquest of Borkin became very powerful under al-Mahdi. Yahya had helped Harun in obtaining the caliphate, and he and his sons were in high favor until 798, when the caliph threw them in prison and confiscated their land. Muhammad ibn Jarrah al-Tabari dates this in 803 and lists various accounts for the cause. Yahya's entering the caliph's presence without permission, Yahya's opposition to Muhammad ibn al-Layth who later gained Arun's favor, and Jaffa's release of Yahya ibn Abdullah ibn Hassan, whom Harun had imprisoned. The fall of the Barmakids is far more likely due to their behaving in a manner that Harun found disrespectful and making decisions in matters of state without first consulting him. Al-Fadl ibn al-Rabi succeeded Yahya the Barmakid as Harun's chief minister. Harun became caliph when he was in his early twenties. Before that, in 780 and again in 782, he had already nominally led campaigns against the caliphate's traditional enemy, the Byzantine Empire, which was under the rule of Empress Irene of Athens. The latter expedition was a huge undertaking, and even reached the Asian suburbs of Constantinople. On the day of accession, his son al mamun was born, and al amin some little time later. The latter was the son of Zubaida, a granddaughter of al Mansur, so he took precedence over the former, whose mother was a Persian. He began his reign by appointing very able ministers who carried on the work of the government so well that they greatly improved the condition of the people. It was under Harun al-Rashid that Baghdad flourished into the most splendid city of its period. 
Tribute was paid by many rulers to the caliph, and these funds were used on architecture, the arts and a luxurious life at court. In 796, Harun decided to move his court and the government to Arakar at the Middle Euphrates. Here he spent 12 years, most of his reign. Only once did he return to Baghdad for a short visit. Several reasons might have influenced the decision to move to Arakar. It was close to the Byzantine border. The communication lines via the Euphrates to Baghdad and via the Balik River to the north and via Palmyra to Damascus were excellent. The agriculture was flourishing to support the new imperial center, and from Rakar any rebellion in Syria and the middle Euphrates area could be controlled. Abu al-Faraj al-Isfahana pictures in his anthology of poems the splendid life in his court. In Arakar the Balm kids managed the fate of the empire, and there both heirs, al-Amin and al-Mamun grew up. Because of the Thousand and One Nights tales, Harun al-Rashid turned into a legendary figure obscuring his true historic personality. In fact, his reign initiated the political disintegration of the Abbasid Caliphate. Syria was inhabited by tribes with Umayyad sympathies and remained the bitter enemy of the Abbasids. While Egypt witnessed uprisings against Abbasids due to maladministration and arbitrary taxation, the Umayyads had been established in Spain in 755, the Adriads in Morocco in 788, and the Aglibids in Ifriqiya in 800. Besides, unrest flared up in Yemen, and the Karijites rose in rebellion in Dalem, Kerman, Fars and Sistan. Revolts also broke out in Khorasan, and Ar Rashid waged many campaigns against the Byzantines. For the administration of the whole empire, he fell back on his mentor and longtime associate Yahya bin Khalid bin Barmaik. Rashid appointed him as his vizier with full executive powers, and, for 17 years, this man Yahya and his sons served Rashid faithfully in whatever assignment he entrusted to them. Our Rashid appointed Ali bin Isa bin Mayan as the governor of Khorasan, who tried to bring to heel the princes and chieftains of the region, and to reimpose the full authority of the central government on them. This new policy met with fierce resistance and provoked numerous uprisings in the region. A major revolt led by Rafia bin al Laith was started in Samarkand, which forced Harun al Rashid to move to Khorasan. He first removed and arrested Ali bin Isa bin Mayan but the revolt continued unchecked. Harun al-Rashid died very soon when he reached Sanabad village in Tus and was buried in Dar al-Imara, the summer palace of Humayd ibn Qatabar, the Abbasid governor of Khorasan. Due to this historical event, the Dar al-Imara was known as the Mausoleum of Haruniya. Our Rashid virtually dismembered the empire by apportioning it between his two sons al amin and al mamun Very soon it became clear that by dividing the empire, Rashid had actually helped to set the opposing parties against one another, and had provided them with sufficient resources to become independent of each other. After the death of Harun al-Rashid, civil war broke out in the empire between his two sons, al amin and al mamun which spiraled into a prolonged period of turmoil and warfare throughout the caliphate, ending only with Mamun's final triumph in 827. Both Einhard and Nokka the Stammerer refer to envoys traveling between Harun's and Charlemagne's courts. Amicable discussions concerning Christian access to the Holy Land and the exchange of gifts. Nokka mentions Charlemagne sent Harun Spanish horses, colorful Frisian cloaks and impressive hunting dogs. In 802 Harun sent Charlemagne a present consisting of silks, brass candelabra, perfume, balsam, ivory chessmen, a colossal tent with many colored curtains, an elephant named Abel Abyss, and a water clock that marked the hours by dropping bronze balls into a bowl. As mechanical knights, one for each hour, emerged from little doors which shut behind them, the presents were unprecedented in Western Europe and may have influenced Carolingian art. 
When the Byzantine Empress Irene was deposed, Nikephoros I became emperor and refused to pay tribute to Harun, saying that Irene should have been receiving the tribute the whole time. News of this angered Harun, who wrote a message on the back of the Roman emperor's letter and said, In the name of God the Most Merciful, from Amir al Mumin and Harun al Rashid, commander of the faithful, to Nikephoros, dog of the Romans. Thou shalt not hear, thou shalt behold my reply. After campaigns in Asia Minor, Nikephorus was forced to conclude a treaty, with humiliating terms. Harun made pilgrimages to Mecca several times, e.g., 793, 795, 797, 802 and last in 803. Tabari concludes his account of Harun's reign with these words. It has been said that when Harun al-Rashid died, there were 900 million odd in the state treasury, an alliance was established with the Chinese Tang dynasty by al-Rashid after he sent embassies to China. He was called RLUN in the Chinese Tianj annals. The alliance was aimed against the Tibetans. In 808, Harun went to settle the insurrection of Rafia ben al Laith in Transoxania, became ill, and died in 809. He was buried under the palace of Hamid ibn Qatabi, the governor of Khorasan. The location later became known as Mashhad because of the martyrdom of Imam Marida in 818. Anecdotes Many anecdotes attached themselves to the person of Harun al-Rashid in the centuries following his rule. Saadi of Shiraz inserted a number of them into his Gulistan, in one telling how Harun enjoined his son to forgiveness. Al-Masudi relates a number of interesting anecdotes in the Meadows of Gold illuminating the character of this caliph. For example, he recounts Harun's delight when his horse came in first, closely followed by al mamuns at a race Harun held at Rakar. Al-Masudi tells the story of Harun setting his poets a challenging task. When others failed to please him of Miskin of Medina succeeded superbly well. The poet then launched into a moving account of how much it had cost him to learn that song. Harun laughed saying he knew not which was more entertaining, the song or the story. He rewarded the poet. There is also the tale of Harun asking Ishaq ibn Ibrahim to keep singing. The musician did until the caliph fell asleep. Then, strangely, a handsome young man appeared, snatched the musician's lute, sang a very moving piece, and left. On awakening and being informed of this, Harun said Ishaq ibn Ibrahim had received a supernatural visitation. Harun, like a number of caliphs, is given an anecdote connecting a poem with his death. Shortly before he died, he is said to have been reading some lines by Abu al-Amat about the transitory nature of the power and pleasures of this world, popular culture and references. In Shinobu Otaka's Magi, the Labyrinth of Magic, the former king of Balbad is called Rashid Saluja. In the spin-off adventure of Sinbad, Rashid's alias is Harun. Rex Stutz, The League of Frightened Men, page 191, has Mr. Hibbid say, Harun al-Rashid, was seeking entertainment, not life. Henry Wadsworth Longfellow wrote a poem which started, one day around al-Rashid read a book wherein the poet said where are the kings and where the rest of those who once the world possessed. Oh, Henry uses the character in his story, the caliph and the cad. The theme of the story is, turning the tables on Harun al-Rashid. Alfred Tennyson wrote a poem in his youth entitled, Recollections of the Arabian Nights. Every stanza ends with, of good Harun or Rashid. Harun al-Rashid was a main figure and character in several of the stories in some of the oldest versions of the 1001 Nights. Harun al-Rashid figures throughout James Joyce's Ulysses, in a dream of Stephen Dedalus, one of the protagonists. Stephen's efforts to recall this dream continue throughout the novel, culminating in the novel's 15th episode, wherein some characters also take on the guise of Harun. Harun al-Rashid is also celebrated in a 1923 poem by W.B. 
Yates, The Gift of Harun al-Rashid, a story of one of Harun's wanderings provides the climax to the narrative game of titles at the end of Italo Calvino's If on a Winter's Night a Traveler. In Calvino's story, Harun wanders at night, only to be drawn into a conspiracy in which he is selected to assassinate the Caliph Harun al-Rashid. In Charles Dickens' 1842 travelogue, American Notes for General Circulation, he compares American supporters of slavery to the Caliph Harun al-Rashid in his angry robe of scarlet. The two protagonists of Salman Rushdie's 1990 novel Haroun and the Sea of Stories are Haroun and his father Rashid Khalifa. In the stent science fiction novels by Alan Cole and Chris Bunch, the character of the Eternal Emperor uses the name H. E. Rashid when incognito. This is confirmed in the final book of the series. As a reference to the character from Burton's translation of the Book of the Thousand Nights and a Night, in Roald Dahl's story The BFG, the Sultan of Baghdad says he had an uncle called Caleb Harun al-Rashid who disappeared with his wife and ten children. The movie The Golden Blade, starring Rock Hudson and Piper Laurie depicts the adventures of Harun who uses a magic sword to free a fairy tale Baghdad from Jafar the evil usurper of the throne. After he finally wins the hand of Princess Karuz and she awards him the title Al-Rashid. The comic book The Sandman features a story set in the world of the 1001 Nights, with Harun al-Rashid as the protagonist. It highlights his historical and mythical role as well as his discussion of the transitory nature of power. The story is included in the collection The Sandman, Fables and Reflections. Eraran al Pusa in the French comic strip is Nogud as a satirical version of Harun al Rashid. In Quest for Glory 2, the Sultan who adopts the hero as his son is named Harun al Rashid. He is often seen prophesying on the streets of shape here as the poet Omar. Harun al Rashid appears as the leader of Arabia in the video game Civilization V. Future U.S. President Theodore Roosevelt, when he was a New York Police Department commissioner, was called in the local newspapers, Harun al Roosevelt, in The Master and Margarita, by novelist Mikhail Bulgakov. Harun al Rashid is referenced by the character Korofiev, in which he warns a doorman not to judge him by his suit and to reference the story of the famous caliph Harun al-Rashid. In the 1924 film Wax Works, a poet is hired by a wax museum proprietor to write backstories for three wax models. Among these wax models is Harun al-Rashid, played by Emil Jannings. In the 2006 novel Variable Star by Robert Heinlein and Spider Robinson, Chapter 1 is prefaced with a quotation from Alfred Lord Tennyson's Recollections of the Arabian Nights regarding Good Harun al-Rashid, the relevance of which becomes apparent in Chapter 2 when one character relates stories of Harun al-Rashid to another character in order to use them as an analogy. The second chapter in the novel Prince Otto by Robert Louis Stevenson has the title in which the prince plays Harun al-Rashid. Harun al-Rashid has a character page in the video game Crusader Kings 2, and it is possible to play as his descendants of the Abbasid dynasty. Harun al-Rashid is mentioned in passing by the character Madame de Villefort in Alexander Dumas's novel The Count of Monte Cristo as an example of how different cultures react to poisoners.